How's it going, everybody? Pleasure Mobile here, bringing you another absolute banger of a platinum. Today, we've got Time Splitters, the enhanced remaster of the classic PS2 FPS that released way back in 2000 as a launch title for the console. You can get this as part of PlayStation Plus Premium, or you can buy it for 10 bucks, and it is cross-buy. This is an absolute doozy of a platinum, so if you're looking for challenge, this is the game for you. Literally, you have to finish all 27 challenge mode levels to get the platinum unlocked, and it is not easy. You'll unlock challenge mode once you finish the last level of the single player campaign. You have to finish every single level on normal, and you have to finish one level with full health, which isn't as bad as you'd think, as the first time I finished the first level of the game, Tomb, I finished with full health and got the trophy. Use the rewind function often to help you get through the campaign. It really comes in handy when you come around a corner and get blasted by two shotgun-wielding zombies at the same time and lose three quarters of your health at once. The only other trophy you're going to need to do is make a map with the map editor, which I'll show you how to do after the campaign. It only takes a second to do. You don't actually have to make a map. You just have to save one and you'll unlock the trophy. I'm not going to do a full commentary walkthrough. The levels are almost all under 10 minutes long. And my biggest tip really is just to use the rewind feature to your advantage. It'll save your life pretty often while you figure out where the enemy spawns are. I will, however, explain each challenge level at the beginning of each level, so if you need help on a particular level, feel free to use the timestamps to check out how I went about getting through it. Now, go ahead and enjoy the glory that is Time Splitters 1 played on a PS5. Yeah. 
Oh boy, am I ready for this?
Excellent decision.
Roger, sir. I'm going in.
rushing to get to Barat's star, please make your way to play the So, like I said earlier, all you have to do is go into the map maker and save the map to unlock the trophy. You might have to place a single tile down, I'm not sure, but that worked just fine for me. So for 1A, we have to shoot the heads off of 50 zombies in 2 minutes, and this is maybe a 4 out of 10 for difficulty. The best way i found to go about getting this done is to just post up in one of the back hallway openings and get to work while aiming. So for 1B, you have to punch the heads off of 30 zombies in one minute, and this is slightly harder than the previous, maybe a 5 out of 10 for difficulty. No real strategy for this one, it'll probably take you a couple tries to get the hang of unarmed combat in this game. So for 1C, you have to score 10,000 points in a last stand against the zombies, and I found this to be easier than it looks at first, maybe a 3 out of 10 for difficulty. The best way I found to get my score that high was to grab the shotgun and head up to the balcony area, focusing on taking out the police and jacket zombies that spawn at either end of the hallway, and dealing with any brown zombies that happen to figure out their way up the stairs. For whatever reason, it seems the other zombies can't figure the stairs out, so save them for the end, grab some ammo, and head back up to rinse and repeat.
So for 2A, you have to kill 100 ducks in 5 minutes, and this is maybe a 5 out of 10 for difficulty. The best way i found to go about getting this done is to hang out near the set of outside stairs that lead up to the second floor of one of the buildings. There's health nearby, there's a double Uzi right there, and it's a great spot to handle a bunch of different spawn spots for the ducks. You might have to try this a couple times, I finished it with literally one second left on the clock.
So for 2B, you have to win the match with at least 100 kills in 7 minutes, and this is maybe another 5 out of 10 for difficulty. This is a team deathmatch, with you being on one team, the ducks are another team, and there's a third team with two aliens running around. The ducks don't really hurt much, but the aliens will absolutely wreck you, so focus fire them the moment they're in sight.
So for 2C, you have to escort Duckman Drake to the end of the level, and this is maybe another 5 out of 10 for difficulty. The Chinese chefs and waiters that spawn really hurt if they shoot you, so you have to stay on your toes and take them out the moment you see them. There's also two spots with mounted turrets that you're going to want to take out well before Drake gets to them, so be on the lookout for those. So for 3A, you have to hold on to the bag for one minute, and this is maybe a 3 out of 10 for difficulty. There's a number of bots running around trying to do the same thing, so what you want to try to do is grab a rocket launcher, grab the bag, and head into one of the dead end areas and just camp out there. 
When a bot comes around the corner, just blast them with a rocket launcher and hold out for as long as possible.
for 3B, you have to save 15 lobsters in five and a half minutes, and this is maybe a six out of 10 for difficulty. There's three teams trying to grab the lobsters, your red, then blue, and yellow, and you essentially have to save a lobster every 22 seconds, and I found the best way to go about doing this is to focus on grabbing the bag from somebody else if they have it. They'll carry the bag most of the way back into the village, so it's a shorter run for you to get to your turn and spot.
So for 3C, you have to shoot the heads off 40 zombies in 5 minutes, and this is maybe a 5 out of 10 for difficulty. The difference between this and the previous zombie head shooting challenge is that these zombies are armed, and they hurt if they catch you with a shot. They'll tend to run towards you wherever you are on the map, so the toughest part is probably going to be trying to survive while getting enough headshots in 5 minutes.
So for 4A, you have to break every bit of glass and marble in the level within a minute 10 seconds. And this is maybe a 5 out of 10 for difficulty. There's four pieces of glass you can take out in the building directly behind you when you spawn, one of which you have to look through the window to see. There's four pieces in the building directly ahead of you when you spawn, and the rest are all on a building at the other end of the level. You have infinite ammo, so just start blasting, and after a couple tries, you'll know where all the glass is. So for 4B, you have to break every bit of glass and all the plates in the level in 3 minutes, and this is maybe a 6 out of 10 for difficulty. There's 140 pieces at the start of the level, and the best way I've found to keep track is that if you clear every room other than the kitchen, the room with the plates in it, there should only be 47 pieces left by the time you get to the kitchen. If there's more than that, you've missed some somewhere. So for 4C, you have to break every bit of glass and all the plates in the level in four and a half minutes, but you have to do it with a throwable brick. And this is maybe one of the top two hardest levels in the entire game, 10 out of 10 for difficulty. You'll have to utilize both the regular R2 throw as well as the harder R1 throw for the higher panes of glass, and the timer is very tight on this one. Expect to take a number of tries to get it done.
So for 5A, you have to help the king get 10 kills in one minute, and this is maybe a 1 out of 10, probably the easiest level in the game. The king isn't a pushover. He hits hard and can take a lot of damage, so just grab a gun and start blasting, and you should get through this without any issue. So for 5B, you have to help the king get 25 kills in a minute 15, and this is maybe a 2 out of 10 for difficulty, slightly harder just because of the increased kill count. Grab the Mausers to the right of where you spawn as they make quick work of the enemies. So for 5C, you have to help the king get 25 kills in a minute 15 again, but this time you can only get 3 kills. If you get any more than that, you'll lose. So this is a very luck and AI based 3 out of 10 for difficulty. Get your 3 kills done right off the bat, and I found the best way to keep the king down towards where the enemies spawn was to keep using the health packs up top near where you initially spawn. That forces him to grab the health packs down below, keeping him a lot closer to the enemy spawns. So for 6A, you have to shoot all 72 of the barrels in the level in less than 6 minutes, and this is maybe an 8 out of 10 for difficulty. Don't hold down fire to shoot, pull the trigger manually as it's faster. It's a very tight time limit for this level, so try your best to hit more than one barrel at the same time with your shotgun shots. There's one barrel on a raised platform behind a wall that you can only hit from the outdoor catwalks near the back of the level. So keep track of what number you're at when you start shooting at it to make sure you know you've completely destroyed it.
So for 6B, you have to escort the lieutenant to the end of the level, and this is maybe a 7 out of 10 for difficulty. This is a tough one as well, essentially because there's so many spawns. Grab the double Uzi as soon as you can and start blasting, and your main priority is going to be ammo management. Reload every single time there's even the slightest of breathers to make sure you have a full magazine ready to go at all times. This one is probably going to take you a number of tries, but the spawns don't really change, so practice is going to help you get through it. So for 6C, you have to prevent the enemies from stealing 5 or more bags from the bank, and this is maybe a 4 out of 10 for difficulty. You have to stay up on this balcony area the entire time, and your enemies hurt a lot if they catch you with a shot, so expect to die often. As long as the enemy doesn't fully escape with a bag, it won't count as being lost, so just make sure you focus fire anybody carrying a bag, and then worry about people going into the bank.
So for 7A, you have to capture 15 items and win the match in 3 minutes, and this is maybe an 8 out of 10 for difficulty. It's absurd how hard the enemies hit in this level, and there's 6 of them constantly running around. Try to run out and grab a bag if you can, but focus more on preventing the other teams from getting a bag back to their turn-in spot. It's definitely going to take a number of tries, but doing it that way will allow you to get a quick turn-in, something necessary without quickly the enemies will take you out. This is also very AI dependent because your teammates will be running out and grabbing bags more often than you will, so you might just get a bad round. So for 7B, you have to help your team win with at least 5 bag captures in 5 minutes, and this is maybe a 6 out of 10 for difficulty. You're for sure going to need more than 5 captures to actually beat the other teams, so maybe spend the first attempt just figuring out the layout of the map. I found the best way to get captures was to head right from where you spawn, into the doorway, down the corridor, and into the room with the boxes yellow bag is here so grab that and either head back the way you came if your radar says it's clear or head forward through the supermarket area and back out to your spawn to turn it in
So for 7C, you have to help your team win the match with 45 kills in 3 minutes, and this is maybe a 4 out of 10 for difficulty. Your team is going to go to work on this level, so focus on getting maybe 25 or so kills yourself, and you should be good to go. So for 8A, you have to help your team win the match with 80 kills in 5 minutes, and this is maybe a 6 out of 10 for difficulty. It's essentially the same deal as the previous level, just with a longer time limit and a higher kill goal. Friendly Fire is turned on for this and the following levels, so keep an eye on your radar to make sure you're not killing your team.
So for 8B, you have to help your team win the match with at least five bag captures in five minutes, and this is maybe an eight out of 10 for difficulty. With friendly fire turned on, this becomes a bit trickier and the enemies hit like absolute trucks, so the time limit ends up being pretty tight. It's a relatively short loop from where you spawn to where the enemy bag location is, and I would recommend taking out your own team if they're near your capture point, as I found the AI would sometimes decide to run back the other way, away from the capture point, and get stuck in a pattern like that.
So for 8C, you have to help your team hold the bag for three out of the five total minutes, and this is maybe a five out of ten for difficulty. Friendly fire is still turned on, so keep that in mind. You can see where the bag is with the blinking white dot on the radar, but keep in mind there's an underground area as well. You might want to use your first attempt just to figure out the map. It can be a little tricky.
So for 9A, you have to kill 60 time splitters in 5 minutes, and this is maybe a 9 out of 10 for difficulty, so one of the hardest missions in the game. You're going to need a number of runs to get through this, both because it's genuinely difficult to get all 60 kills in the 5 minute time limit, and because the layout of the map is tough to get a handle on. You're basically going to have to memorize the layout and where the spawns are to have a chance of getting through this. Oh yeah, and the time splitters hit like absolute trucks, so expect to die pretty often.
So for 9B, you have to escort the stewardess through the level, and this is maybe a 5 out of 10 for difficulty. Honestly, after the previous level, this one feels like an absolute breeze. Just focus on the radar and take the time splitters out before they get to the stewardess and you'll be fine.
So for 9C, you have to score at least 25,000 points while defending four crystals, and this is a 10 out of 10 for difficulty. It's either this or the brick level for the hardest level in the game. I'll leave that up to you to decide for yourself. You're on a mounted gun trying to keep zombies away from these four crystals. You get a bonus depending on how quickly you finish the phase, and it's going to take you a number of tries to get through. Your R2 is a faster spray -er shot, and your R1 is a slower, more precise shot. Use the precise shot on any targets further away, and R2 for everything else. Friendly fire is turned on for these crystals, so try not to shoot them at all. There's a ray gun nearby that you can pick up if you need it, but hopefully you won't. This is the last mission you'll have to do, and they made it a tough one, but once you're done with this, you'll get the last trophy and the platinum. That'll do it for me though, everybody. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to leave a like, comment down below which number of platinum this was for you, 
and subscribe to the channel for more trophy hunting content. This was number 1013 for me.